Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn 101. This episode, going to be talking about the Thousand Maws of Total Rock. It's a level 23 to 25 dungeon located in Southern Black Shroud. You can enter it simply by talking to the gate guard at the outside. He will let you in. Keep in mind, this is how it is in Beta Phase 3, but in Beta Phase 4, you can expect a more mainstreamed mission to get you into the dungeon. So uh, we'll see about that, but for the time being, this is how it was done in Phase 3. I will be updating this video in Phase 4, by the way, with an actual video so for the time being we'll be using screenshots um, so total rock has a few uh, niche things you have to keep in mind uh, a lot of it is a uh, reminiscent of its 1.0 version except that the dungeon is a lot more linear now and the side paths kind of only are there to get some extra loot uh, First thing you want to keep in mind, after you enter the dungeon, ignore the water stain notes on the wall. They don't do anything. They are simply there for lore purposes. If you care about lore, read them, but they have no actual function for the dungeon itself. Uh, the first, so the first thing you want to notice after you pull a couple of monsters is you'll notice a Magitek photo cell chilling in the first room. Uh, you're going to need to collect four of these at two separate intervals. So before the first boss and before the second boss, you're going to have to make sure you have four of these things. Don't worry, I believe there's about ten of them in the entire dungeon, so this is pretty easy to do, and it's fairly hard to miss to miss them. Um, you'll also notice that there's a giant door in the uh, in the first room on the on the left hand side uh, from when you walk in. This door is actually reminiscent of again the uh, 1.0 versions. There's a lot of times where uh, there will be side rooms that lead to uh, treasure coffers. So keep an keep an open mind, keep an open eye, keep your eye on the map, and you will see that there are a lot of ex there's a lot of extra loot sitting around in this dungeon. If you go in there, you'll also notice your first web sucking wall trap, as I tend to call them, because I have no name for them. They actually do have a name, I just don't know what to call them. Um, and it, it's actually a uh, a sort of webbed uh, a webbed door. You can see it's open at the time, but when somebody approaches it, it will suck in all the nearest players and close. And anyone on the other side needs to DPS it to get the wall down. Uh, there's going to be a few parts of the dungeon where you'll have to do this. Uh, this one's an optional one. This one in the side room. But uh, just use it as practice because uh, you're going to want to make sure that everyone gets in at the same time, just so you have an easy time with it. And uh, so especially, you don't want to DPS to get sucked in and your tank and your healer to not get sucked in. So just make sure the tank is in front and that he's making sure that everybody is nearby when you approach the wall. Uh, other than that, you just have to deal with some annoying ranged enemies. Uh, these enemies can knock you back as well. So uh, don't worry too much. Just make sure you drag every monster in the uh, area or that was linked to that monster to that uh, ranged enemy so that way you can uh, make sure you just have them all tanked. If it's one of those fly trap things, then just make sure that you have your back to a wall so that way you don't get knocked back and you have to reposition yourself. So other than that, not a big deal. One thing that you'll definitely notice at the beginning of the dungeon is, this, is that there is a split path. Both paths lead to the boss, and both paths have adequate number of uh, photo cells to make sure that when you reach the boss, you don't need to loop back around and get any. So just take whichever path uh, is cooler to you at the time. The only really reason you would want to take both paths is maybe to grind all the experience out from all the monsters. But there's there's no real benefit towards taking one path over the other. I believe the second path might actually have one less treasure coffer. Uh, I think the path that you follow straight down actually has one treasure coffer, so... If you want, just follow that path. It's, it's the easiest path to follow. It's a path right in front of you. And both of these eventually lead up to the first boss. When you approach the um, the switch to the door in the middle of the room, the boss will spawn. Looks like an Ochu from uh, Final Fantasy of Old, and he actually is a very simple first boss. He only has two mechanics, an auto attack and a poison that he'll do at the very beginning of the fight. Now, keep in mind that he will recast this poison every single time that the, his main target, the tank, hopefully, has, uh, has his poison removed. So you can either continuously remove the poison so that he doesn't attack too often and weave in some cures, or you could just cure through the poison damage. It's not so bad. Uh, it's only a few points of damage per tick, so nothing really to worry about. Once you clear him, you'll get your loot, you'll open the door, and you'll move on. Now there's more of this and more enemies that look like this guy in this next section, and you'll have to kill them because they actually they are actually the enemies that drop photo cells in the second section. They look very similar to him, so you really won't be able to miss them. Just be paying attention after you kill them for somebody to pick up the photo cell. Now, this part also does have a, a lot of side, uh, a lot of side rooms, a lot more side rooms than the first section does. That uh, that can lead to loot. So make sure whenever you come to a big decision, a fork in the path, or a tiny little side rooms, that you're paying attention to which ones have which. In my future video, I will show you where all of these treasure coffers are. So don't worry. Just for the time being, just know that they are there are side rooms and that they are there. Um, 
Next is the, uh, pff, there's not really much more to go on here. There's more side rooms with coffers, O2 enemies, drop the photo cells. And then you'll get to the second boss. And the second boss, you might only have three photo cells when you do this. So if you have to, go down the side room and collect the fourth photo cell and get the treasure coffers that are down there. Once you come back, it'll essentially be the first boss again. <laughs> He's even got the same name. He's a little bit bigger from what I could tell. And he also uh, summons ads. That's the only real difference between him and the first boss. He'll summon two ads. That'll disappear if you finish the boss. So I wouldn't recommend limit breaking this, but... Uh, just finish the main boss while the tank uh, tanks the uh, other two adds. Uh, unless your your party is really struggling to uh, to keep up with the damage, then you can kill the little two adds just to make the fight a little easier. Uh, after that, the next part of the dungeon is significantly different from the rest. There's two more mechanics in the dungeon itself that you have to pay attention to on top of new enemies. So some of the new enemies are lightning elementals and uh, more enemies that do the knockback moves. Not a big deal. Uh, but you'll also run into this green slime on the ground that slows your movement speed. More of a hindrance than anything else very very annoying to some people but you'll also notice that there are pods all over the place now do not approach these pods and hit them they will explode and they will do a pretty big chunk of damage and poison whoever gets caught in the explosion uh, other than that just make sure your range are taking care of them they die in one hit and then move forward also make sure to pay attention when turning corners most of the time there's one hidden right on the other side of the corner so you may want to make a wide wide turn other than that there's just some more uh, walls that suck you in and summon enemies like with traps not a big deal you've dealt with it before so you can deal with it now but you'll do this until you reach the final boss and the final boss actually pretty much combines everything from the dungeon previously um he actually has all the following moves He's got pods on the outside of the room when the fight starts. So make sure that you have a range to go around and destroy them. If you don't have any range in your party, even the healer can go around and destroy them, or the melee can go around using their ranged attack to destroy them. Just get rid of them so they're not there. Uh, those outside parts of the room also have, a, also have the green slime on them, so I wouldn't recommend tanking him there. I actually recommend tanking him right on the outer edge of the circle with his with one of his sides facing the wall and the other side facing the middle of the arena so as you can see here in this picture this is how i would recommend it now he's only got two moves in phase one of his fight the first one is uh, a knockback uh, it's got a long charge up time and it'll only hit whoever is in front of him so uh, the tank can actually sidestep this move uh, similar to the dragon's breath move in uh, brave Lock's long stop if you've watched that video you can sidestep it and then move back in front of him and you'll never have to worry about him actually repositioning and messing up the dps's rotation his other move and this is a move that seems to do the most damage to parties who aren't aware of the mechanics of the dungeon he actually looks at a random party member and summons a pod after about five or six seconds that will explode if you don't move away from it. So DPS, if you see him turn to face you, run away from your current position, wait for the pod to get destroyed, and then head back to that position. Um, phase one, very simple. He'll also summon a couple of adds. Not a big deal. Uh, don't Again, don't limit break here. Don't limit break this early. Just take care of the adds and uh, move on to phase two. Phase two, his tail will break. Um, this opens up a new move for him where he'll slam his tail into the ground and summon a giant, in comparison to the rest of the room, green pool. Uh, for the tank, I highly recommend that this, that every time he does this tail slam move that you run out of it immediately, back him up to a place where the DPS can handle him without having to deal with the green pool himself, and then uh, continue the fight. He'll still do all his moves from phase one, and he will summon additional adds in this phase. Now, you have two options during this phase. Option one is to destroy the tail so he stops doing the green pool move. This will uh, put him into a phase three, which he will summon uh, two more sets of adds, and he'll continue the moves he was doing in phase one. Not so bad. Um, I don't recommend doing it this way if unless you have a party that is, uh, I guess, inexperienced, I guess would be because um, otherwise you're making the fight take a lot longer than it has to. And considering that if you've dodged the tail move once, you can dodge the tail move repeatedly, uh, I prefer to just burn him down in the tail phase. Now, uh, again, you're going to need a party that has decent enough weapons and decent enough damage to do this, however. So if your damage isn't up to par, I would highly recommend destroying the tail. Um, he'll summon more adds in this phase, though, so uh, make sure that the tank is able to handle them very well, because if they're all over the place when the tank is trying to kite, it can be very chaotic, and I recommend just holding them until the fight is over. They will disappear when the fight is over anyway. This is where I recommend that one of your DPS use their limit breaks. Now, if you have a Thaumaturge to make the fight easier, once the tank has the adds gathered up, the Thaumaturge can, uh, can limit break uh, the boss and the adds and get rid of them. That would make the fight the absolute easiest. However, if you don't, I highly recommend trying to get a level 2 and finishing him off with, uh, what is it called? I don't even remember. Uh, Sword Dance, I believe, is a level 2 limit break for DPS. Uh, if not, just use Braver. Just get him down low, get him down quick, and you won't have a big problem with this 
fight. It's very, very simple, but a lot of people are not too experienced with it, so hopefully this helps you out a lot. Like I said, I will be recording a video of this dungeon in the very near future, so don't worry, you'll get a more explicit guide very soon. If you found this video useful though, please like, favorite, subscribe, and share. Especially if you have a friend who might be wondering what kind of mechanics they could put in the dungeons and how they can make the dungeons themselves hard without overwhelming trash mobs. Um, also, I would like to thank my subscribers for your donations. I have officially ordered my Blues Microphone Yeti, so this thing stops turning off, which it'll probably do in about a minute or two. So hopefully we can uh, get through the video before then. All, if you would like to donate to help improve the quality and quantity of the stream, you can check out my donate link in the description below. I also have my Amazon wish list, which will let people know what I'm currently working towards in terms of donations. Uh, all my donations are only going to be used for things for this YouTube channel and for my Twitch stream. Uh, if you don't want to donate to that, I also do work with the, the Save the Children Foundation through Athene Live, a League of Legends player and an ex-World of Warcraft player. He's a very, very kind person and we've been raising a lot of money. So if you want to head to his stream, uh, it's in the description below. Go there, subscribe, uh, help uh, save the children. Every donation means a lot more than you think it does and he'll explain that on his stream. Uh, also, if you uh, don't want to do the uh, Twitch signing up yourself, you could always donate to me and I will do the subscribing for you. If you don't want to donate to charity or if you don't want to help me get uh, equipment that doesn't break mid-video, you can always go to my Facebook at www.facebook.com slash MrHappy1227 where uh, you can go and donate your ideas. I like to take, I like to uh, hear people's ideas for videos and I like to converse with them. It's just a very nice community of Final Fantasy XIV players who are just looking for people to play with and have fun with and share screenshots and whatever you want to do use it for however it pleases you but anyway guys thank you for watching and uh stay tuned for next episode because i have something special planned so take care guys have a good day